I'm Johan, I'm playing as Great Britain here, and uh, we're in 1937, and my job is to defeat the Germans, who is played by... By me, Troy Goodfellow. I do PR and development support for our Paradox Development Studios, and I'm taking over from Jakob Munte, who had led Germany last week, and I've been trying to make sense of his largely historical plan, though he seems to have made quite a few small oversights that I will try to fix before Johan and his team of allies come smashing through my gates. Well, I'm not sure where we are the aggressive one. Where's the we are the protector of peace. We're protecting the old order of Europe that was undone by the injustices of Versailles. So we'll see who's actually defending propriety. Yeah, let's uh, start the game and start uh, uh, taking the time. All right. So going speed free. Speed three sounds good. Yeah. Just uh, rearranging my army a little bit. Montgomery in charge of the home defense, and I have a Mediterranean command group with three different armies. The ex a British Expeditionary Force. Oh, reinforcing the Empire is finished. As is my treaty with the Soviets. Okay. I'm gonna do service overseas, that's a good one. So, choosing the next national focus, I'm gonna stick not too far from Jakob's plan. Now, where was he? Treaty with the Soviets. Where's that? Yeah. Can't find where anything is anymore. There's a building stuff. Let's see what I can do in enough that. Oh, Page Halifax. Let's see if I can. Strategic Bombers. I'm going to stick with Army Innovation since really the Army is uh, Germany's strength. I want to take a look at uh, editing divisions here, which is kind of an important thing, an important tool. You'll see I've gained quite a bit of experience here, uh, 33 land experience, uh, which is a nice little chunk. So if you go into your division designer menu, you can edit your division. So the Panzer Division, for example, is all light tanks and motorized infantry. I might want to stick in, say, a heavy tank, since I've researched those. So I throw in a heavy tank division and another heavy tank division, and that's going to cost me 10 experience that I've saved up through my training and my exercising and whatever experience I had in the Spanish Civil War. So I can do that, and now I've got to build heavy tanks to fill in my panzer divisions and any new panzer divisions I make. You'll see I'm already missing light tanks for the panzer division because you still have to replace the units that degrade over time. Uh, Jakobs did not, was not building any tanks, which I think is kind of surprising. So let's take a few of these things out of uh, the weapons and we'll build some heavy tanks here. And we have enough artillery. We'll take some out of there and we'll build some light tanks. Uh, but I'm running short on a lot of things. Uh, for example, oil. Germany's got a lot of problems with resources. And one way to fix that is by building synthetic plants, which I will be doing shortly. And another way, probably the best way and the fastest way, well, the research is coming fast here, uh, is uh, through trade. When you're trading something, a resource you need, you end up giving up civilian factories. So I will go to Romania and I need uh, 28 oil to get my factories at their most efficient. To build the, I can build the units anyway, but they will be slower. I won't get as much out of my factories unless I get this 28 oil. To do that, it will cost me seven fast civilian factories away from what they're already working on. My civilian factories are now building more civilian factories. They're kind of important, so this is a trade-off you'll have to think about uh, as you play the game. I do want to get my tanks in faster, but I don't think I need 28 oil. So I'll get in eight oil, still run a shortage, uh, but it will only cost you two civilian factories. Won't take away too much from my production at this point. And I've saved up a lot of uh, political capital here, political power. Oh, he's already bought the good guys. I can't buy any of the good guys. He already got them. Right. I'm missing researching better technology. Uh, if looking at Britain, I'm storing uh, my political power. It says I can modify government, but I'm. Uh, I want to add Montgomery. He's, there's a few of those uh, theorists or scientists that cost more than the regular 150 political power. Montgomery is great because 
he gives me 15% Grand Battle Doctrine research speed instead of a normal theorist that just gives 10%. So Somerville, yeah, Bomber Harris. Oh, I want him as well. Nah, I just want Montgomery because those uh, stuff are just way, way too good in my opinion. You've got to think carefully about which people you hire. You don't need, for example, Bomber Harris isn't somebody you need right now. So you can spend, spend you can save that up for later. Uh, right now, you know, uh, what I need for Germany is a, a drill expert that speeds up my army training time, means I get my experience back a lot faster uh, when they're exercising. It's quite a valuable person to have. Later on, when the war starts, I might want to swap him out for somebody who can actually help me in the war instead of the training. Um, the Germans have a bonus in political power gain, um, though generally every nation has at least one person they can hire who will give them an advantage uh, in that. Ooh, did you get uh, Amelia Earhart as well, or did you? Yes. She circumnavigated the globe. She survived this timeline. That was interesting. My army is just 428 day, 425 days away from being fully motorized. And then I'll be able to ride trucks whenever I need them. I've got a long way to go, I think, before I get fully motorized. Oh no, only 11 more. That's not so bad. I've really stockpiled on artillery, though. Never, can never have enough. Shadow scheme. And what has he not been building? I'm going to build a few more dockyards. It's not a huge priority for Germany to focus on the Navy, but you will find um, that if you can't break blockades um, with some submarine stuff or at least cause some weak damage uh, Britain and protect your own lines, you're in quite a bit of trouble. So it helps to have a few dockyards going, though really the naval game isn't something Germany should be paying a whole lot of attention to. Uh, as long as you can get its supplies through, and if that means, you know, grabbing a little chunk of France and a little chunk of Poland so you have more ports, so much the better. Yeah. The thing is, I really want to rearm, but all the cool stuff is locked by the wall tension is too low, so I can't go from for, down through the general rearmament. So I'm going through Mediterranean Bastion, because I want to strengthen... At the end of that, I want to strengthen and go for the... Secure Iraq, maybe uh, protect Malta and Suez. Because strengthening empire is the important thing here. China and Japan are getting into it, which is kind of the right thing right now for me because I have to choose who I want to support. We're going to go the historical path here, and I'll make uh, Japan my friend instead of China. Um, mm. Japan's uh, kind of helpful. Uh, especially if they decide to go heavy on the Soviets when the time comes. Ooh, now I've got enough uh, military experience to add a support battalion to my motorized division, says Britain. And I can't really decide which the first one is, if I need some artillery or recon. I'm a big fan of recon and field hospitals, so... Do you want to explain what recon does? The, the recon does, basically, recon gives you a bigger chance of picking advantageous uh, combat tactics in battle. It's basically, I I can't fight without recon. It's yeah. a it's, it's a f flavor thing. But also, I really like field hospitals because manpower is precious and the empire just doesn't have enough British yeah. troops. Yeah, very few nations have the kind of unlimited manpower you need to not worry about having a field hospital attached to your infantry divisions, especially. A except if you're the Americans and Americans the Soviets. And Soviets, yeah. I mean, the two superpowers at the end were the ones with the most guys. Which I don't think it's coincidental. But the uh, field hospital is just expensive and I need the truck so much, so I'm probably just going, I'm adding some support artillery. That's some punch there. There we go. And I need. A few more, if we say, I need, yeah, I'd have plenty of artillery back in there. So I want to pick an aircraft designer here, and they're all pretty awesome. 
Um, Messerschmitts give you more speed and agility. The Junkers better ground attack. I'm really a big fan of close air support. I think that it's, uh, as it was during the war, it was for the Germans, it's kind of an essential uh, technology to research to have these types of dive bombers and the like. So I'm going to go with the close air support uh, with the Junkers. It will give me better <coughs> ground attack and make those planes more reliable. Plus, my research speed for air attack is going to go a lot faster. Um, yeah. Which is kind of important for the Germans. Uh, they will be fighting a lot of air stuff over Britain very, very soon. Um, oh. I don't have any fighters. Yeah, I do. Yeah, they are. Ooh. What my, my, my home fighters are Gloucester Gladiators and Mass. That's not really the best uh, fighters in the world. Let's see if I have any better technology than gladiators. I'm still building hurricanes, but I'm not assigned enough. Nothing wrong with a hurricane. It was a fine, fine plane. Yep. I just need to build more. So I should probably Tactical get some bunker. Panzer Divisions going here somewhere. It's going to be hard to do an armored push uh, to Warsaw without having some Panzers. So we'll stick those, and we'll build them in the Ostmark, I guess. And you can see, I've all because I had so much stuff already stored up, I'm already at 44% for building this first Panzer Division because I had so much support equipment and artillery and infantry equipment stockpiled. Not that it's important to stockpile equipment, it gets you, it gets your guys to the front faster. I'm missing a lot of tanks uh, because that's because Jakob was not building any. He's, Guderian would not be pleased uh, with this layout. Tanks. Tanks is a newfangled fad and nothing we will ever, ever have a need for. What's a battleship but a tank on the ocean? But the sea, the sea is the protector of the empire. All right, I've got a free dockyard. Uh, what am I going to do with my one free dockyard? Mm. So we've gotten to the dockyards already, and they're coming up. I'm going to start building submarines. Um, the first one will come in a year and a half, but that's okay. I have more dockyards coming. And then I'll just keep pumping out the submarines, and we'll give them to a good... Uh, and good submarine commander to oversee. Uh, oh, he didn't even give this guy's commander. We gotta fix that. Who's good? Who's good? Oh, there we go. Dernitz. We need to build some more modern battleships. Nah, we'll wait a while. All right, and you'll. Um, and construction. I was a little bit far behind in tech for that, so we'll wait on that. I want to stick as close as I can to uh, keeping the technology at a reasonably historical level. I don't want to rush for nukes. Because uh, the Germans are a trade interdiction country, I think we should focus on the convoy interdiction. There we go. Get some submarines. Japan is my friend. Oh, I forgot that the Encouraged Colonial Elite was so good. I should have picked that one. What does the Encouraged Colonial Elite do? Re reduce my research costs by 5%. There we go. And the dockyards are slowly coming online. Uh, the Germans have such a huge advantage in political power. And they gain two a day, uh, which I guess kind of reflects the activity uh, and energy of uh, the Reich, even though didn't end up working out that well. So raiding fleet, I guess. Oh, I will be able to get Montgomery, yay. So I take a look at my ally here, Italy, which is not exactly being helpful. It doesn't have any troops bordering France. Like, who do they think the enemy are? Uh, we're not going to be invading Yugoslavia anytime soon, though Mussolini might get ideas of his own. But you'll notice they've kind of left the western border around Turin empty. 
so if we go to war with France, uh, Italy is not in the best of shape. And I need tactical bombers. This is a really handy little alert here. Uh, lets you know what's missing. You could in many of your divisions, uh, you could have taken out something offline. There's a whole line here to put extra weapons. What the hell? I'll take that off and build tactical bombers. Uh, here we go. Free military fighters. Mm -hmm. Hmm, I need oil. How can the British need oil? Because the oil are produced by the Americans and the Soviets. I only produce like 42. And it's not really like... The, my oil suppliers were not really developed in this time frame. Right. And I am exporting a lot of it, so... Hello, USA. Give me more oil. Yes, please. It's the problem with the British Empire. Not forward-thinking enough. No. Should have been exploiting oil a long time earlier. Let's see if we can get a new army train somewhere. I think I'm gonna build some tanks. I thought tanks were a fan. Yeah, they claim that. In spite of that, you can go along with the fad. Yeah. Construction, construction, I'm getting new. Civilian factors. Hmm. Why do I build those? This is working out. Now I've got so many. Do I want more military factories or do I want more civilian factories? Now eventually, when the war starts, I can flip them back and forth. If I need more military factories, I can take away from the civilian and put them all on military. Which is why it's never a bad idea to have more civilian factories because then you can build the infrastructure uh, that you'll need later in the war for supply purposes or uh, for synthetics, which I will eventually need to build as kind of a priority for the Germans, and especially the Japanese, uh, to get synthetic factories, which will produce uh, rubber and oil for you. One rubber and two oil. So synthetics are a great way to improve your efficiency. However, building those means you're not building stuff that can actually help you uh, with construction. And it takes up a slot in your province. So you have to think pretty seriously about whether you want to invest in synthetics. Though for the Germans and Japanese, it's never a bad choice. I would argue. Yeah, that's true. I need to decide on what to reserve. Oh, better tax. I don't know what if naval, naval rearmament. <sighs> so Always look for the political focus ideas that give you free things. Yeah. <laughs> free dockyards, free factories. Yeah. I'm thinking of like, I added to my, oh, there's an infantry division. Oh, fuck it, that's what I was building, I was not adding, yeah. My motorists are getting a signal company, because signal company gives you, if you look at the British screen, uh, Steven, uh, you'll see that I'm uh, doing, can add stuff, and I'm going for a signal company that gives initiative 25% there. Signal company, what is initiative? Well, initiative is two things. Uh, where is that initiative is the higher it is the quicker you can reinforce into a battle and the quicker it gets its planning done so you can, since I'm doing the grand battle doctrine thing is I can do a lot of things to uh, really really get high planned going into research versus my take screen here the Grand Battle Doctrine, max planning, I get, can get higher plans, so when I do my plans I get four bigger bonuses from it. And with the quicker plans on my units with a signal company, that means that I have less time until I get the maximum bonus before I attack. So it's just all about setting up these plans and then just charge. 
Italy's claim in Yugoslavia. That's not so. I would like to get moving on the Anschluss, but I can't because I don't have enough divisions. I need 60 divisions to start moving on Austria. Uh, and you'll see for the Malta Ribbentrop Pact, I need 90 divisions. Most of these focus ideas, many of them, especially the later ones, have some prerequisites you need to meet, even, not even just on the tree, but things that your nation will have to have achieved, either being at war or having uh, divisions in the right place. Uh, so it's important to get your planning uh, thinking for that. For example, if I had more divisions out faster, I could already be moving on Austria and getting all of its rich chocolatey goodness. Hmm. I need to decide which path to go down in my doctrine trees, if I want infiltration or assault. Motorized. Max planning, or wall armor, or... or Do you want better recon? No, fuck. No, I'm a motorized and expand. See how my logistics is doing. I have a big stockpile of infantry and enough artillery there. Maybe I should reduce production on... No, it's just building away there. But I'm not having enough tanks. I'm not causing fighters. Where do I want to go for... Who do I want to buy my chromium from? Turkey usually has chromium. Yeah, it's tricky with the allies. It's not a lot of choice this year. No. 228 days? Yeah, my army will be fully motorized before World War II. And that means 40 divisions of goody, glorious motorized troops. So do you think the doctrines are more important than building equipment? I think I'm always researching doctrines. It's yep. one of the things where we are talking about is something that's... If something's a no-brainer, we have to change it. Because I'm like constantly researching doctrines because they give so great bonuses. It's like industry techs are always great because it yep. affects your build-up. Then it's doctrines, doctrines, doctrines. Yeah, if I'm not researching one of the computer texts, then I think I'm doing something wrong. You've always got to have something that speeds up your research. Yeah. But as long as you don't research ahead of time. Then. Yes, you've got to keep weigh that cost. I mean, it's good to be yeah. a little bit ahead, and you can have you can hire leaders uh, with your political points to speed up your electronic engineering or your atomic engineering. But if you're two or three years ahead of time, it's that bonus is probably not going to be worth it. Yeah. Those companies. All right, I got a the BF one ten, which I think is a pretty good plane. All right, um, I'm already researching a land doctrine, researching computing machine. All right, another industry tech. It looks like. going online shortly. It's a shame I won't be here when you get around to the rocketry stuff, because I think that's actually quite fun. Yeah, rocketry is cool. Okay, I'm getting colonial elites now. All right, so I'm pretty much full up on my research, production, and government guys for uh, 
Germany. So I'm spending my political. I, if I was playing an ahistorical game, I could use this political power to completely remake the map. I could sponsor a coup somewhere or make fascism more popular in places. But we're sticking to the historical route uh, for gameplay explanation reasons. Uh, so a lot of this, my points, I'm going to just stick in leaders I don't quite need right now because I'm not at war. But we have a lot of really great leaders here. Um, recovery rate for armies is good. Maybe I want Rundstedt. Uh, Rommel, if I had more tanks. Uh, Air Force, no, let's go to the sea. Dernitz, convoy rating efficiency. That's going to be very important when the war starts, since... As in the war, one of Germany's best options is to try to cut off uh, Britain's trade lifeline from the colonies and the US. All right, I can start researching rocketry, which will give me a bonus to my research speed. Or I could do naval effort. Yeah. Hmm. I'm basically considering a, a law change to get. I don't need the manpower that much, but I'm thinking of switching to a partial mobilization. It will be quicker fac military factory construction, but less consumer goods. Or maybe I should do uh, war industrialist. I'll go for that law first. I always forget about the law changes, but they are generally quite important, um, especially when you go in when you're close to war. Uh, yeah. When the changes are really significant. oil, more oil. Oil is a big bottleneck for a lot of the countries. Yeah. I just hope for the world tension to rise a little bit. It's like, when are you doing the Anschluss? I thought I have more divisions. He wasn't pumping out enough of them. Yeah. Okay, so let's change my main motorized division. Though I can, of course, Place them. It's a big advantage to do Anschluss as quick as you can yep. for the troops. I'm adding field hospitals to my main divisions now. I got support artillery, signal companies, and field hospitals there. So, but that puts a drain on my motorized recovery thing. But I have nice trickle back, low XP loss from combat. If I wanted to rush these green units to the field so I got to my 60 division limit for the Anschluss, I could just deploy them instantly. And there we have four very green units uh, sitting in Franken. Um, they're going to need some training help to ever be useful, but no, it's early enough uh, in the war that might not hurt them too much. Yeah. Still not 60 divisions. How can you have less than 60 divisions? I don't know. I have less than 60 divisions somehow. I, mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't start this production line. No. <laughs> Let's see. I've got 29, 30. 
39. Blitzkrieg, excellent. It's a great doctrine for... Um, Blitzkrieg gives you great bonuses to your organization uh, and your recovery rate for your armor and motorized divisions. Sure, and, I, yep. I wanted to show something I said at the pop up now. Yep. Like, I picked Commonwealth Ties as my last one. We'll go back to my screen. Yeah, yeah well... Uh, Commonwealth ties, and uh, that shows the that I increase in the relations with all the uh, Commonwealth countries, which is okay-ish. But the next ones lets me give a lot of factories in all these countries that are in the Commonwealth. So they develop in Canada, and they will basically get free civilian factories and two naval dockyards for free for my focuses, which is a great idea when you're basically try to strengthen your very, very faithful allies. I can now Angelus. Yay! So in 60 days we'll have Angelus. Which will give me quite a bit of experience, you know, 10 experience is nothing to sneeze at uh, when you're remaking and editing divisions. Well, it also increases the well tension a little bit, which is good because I want to do general rearmaments. But this is a late Anschluss, or no, Anschluss was in March, wasn't it? Um, I believe so, yes. 37 though, wasn't it? No, 38. Okay. Let's get those years next up. But I'm going to be quite a ways from uh, Evangelist, and then that will lead to all of the fun things uh, that we know from the lead up to the war, where I'll be able to, you know, grab the Sedaten land. Or if I wanted to, I could be friends with Czechoslovakia, but we're going to stick with uh, the historical route here. I'm setting up some strategic bombers. I because been. there's this nice Mr. McCorrent that found a place where you can rent bombers by the hour. <laughs> oh, I need to stop watching too much Monty Python. Never. Never. We shall never surrender. Uh, let's see what to pick. Come on, Angelus. Austria's got a lot of neat stuff. I'm thinking light self-propelled artillery is awesome. I think that's something we should avoid in the future. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did 
I don't think the Dutch trust us. They don't? They have all of their troops lined up against the border. I think they're a threat. Yeah. The Belgians, on the other hand, don't seem to care at all. Nope. Yay, Belgium. Let's see what we are getting at. This is interesting because... Uh, oh, it was a coup in the Soviet Union, it looks like. Yeah, it was a bug in the previous version that f let the Trotsky event fire out, like, instantly. Oh. If you didn't do the perch immediately. Or even if you started the perch. So uh, we're going to have uh, Trotskyites, and to quote our... Russian friends, they should have been fascist because they were anti-socialist. And Roosevelt died? Yeah, those things happen. <laughs> All right. It was Roos no, it's, no, it's a report. They elected the Landon. The Landon. No, that's right. He was a, they elected Landon in 36. Uh, yeah. And then it's not, the, then the free party is Republican. You guys really broke history. Yes. Earhart, yeah, it, it, Earhart survived. Uh, Trotsky, uh, Stalin didn't do a purge. We got the Trotsky counter revolutionary charge. And we ended up with Landon winning the election. But thank God we still have George VI on the throne. Yes. So it's like the British Empire is still where it's. Now, if you don't want to research, you can research certain types of specializations for tanks. For example, we have the Panzer, Panzer II. Maybe I want to make a, an anti-aircraft version of that, so I could research that. Um, it doesn't take very long to research, it speeds you up, and it's a variant you can have with your um, tank divisions to, say, stop anti-tank planes or tank destroyers. Um, it's certain something you might want to think about in some cases. But generally, I like sticking with the main models and worrying about the variants later. Hi, Austria. Oh. oh the Not world enough world tension. Not enough world tension. Well, I'll demand the Dayton lamp. Let's see how that works. That'll help. Yeah. No. Oh. And I've got all these free military factories now, well, only four. Thank you, Austria. Right. My strategic bomb command. I have a new order. Western Germany, rubble. these planes in reserve. Where am I going to put them? Yeah, I 
and it shows the pimples over there. I'm putting up some uh, old gladiators to put naval supremacy over the English channel. Which well, reminds me, I should probably put in fighters somewhere, shouldn't I? Air superiority or interception? I believe in air superiority. Favorite planes of the war. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm basically going for. Well, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit like, yeah, I don't talk that much when I'm looking and playing because I'm like, I can't talk and think at the same time. <laughs> That's why it ends up being pretty funny because I like talking and especially at our meetings because I don't think them. <laughs> <laughs> You're revealing all of our business secrets, Johan. Yes. Scary, isn't it? Yes. How little thought goes into anything. What? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh well, we're gonna be ending for today because the time is ticking out and I'm gonna pause the game and there say... We, we are in August 1938, so mm. we got a few months in. Yeah, we got about 12, 14 months or something. Cool. Um, that's about it and we'll be back next Wednesday, I see And then Jacob's back. If he's still alive. I think he's still alive. Yes. It's been great fun on the stream with you guys. I don't get a chance to do this very often. Uh, you're a great community. Uh, keep watching. Take care. Bye-bye.